Hello, I'm Beth Wagner. Welcome to Movement and Function. In today's video, I'm going to show you seven excellent exercises to improve your balance. These are perfect for starting a balance program. These are beginner level one exercises. As I go through them, I'll show you different modifications and different progressions. Be sure to pay attention to how your body is tolerating these exercises and feel free to do more or less to make it feel good for you. Okay, before we jump into the exercises, I wanna talk a little bit about our balance system to give you an idea of all of the different systems that we're working through these exercises. There are three primary components to our balance system. The first is our eyes. We use our vision to know where we are in space and to maintain balance. The second is the inner ear, our vestibular system. The inner ear in both the left and the right ears sends messages to our brain about where we are in space. So as we tilt our head, as we move side to side, as we turn, our inner ear tells our brain that we're turning, that we're making those movements so that we can adjust our balance accordingly. And finally, the part of our body that is in contact with the surface also sends messages to our brain about what's going on with our balance. So when I'm standing, there are constant messages coming up from my feet to my brain that tells me that I'm leaning forward or backward or moving side to side. When I'm sitting, the information from my hips and my buttocks and all the way up my spine goes to the brain and my brain uses that information to adjust my posture and positioning in order to maintain balance. In addition to the physical components of the balance system, we also have mental and emotional components that help us maintain balance. For example, if we have experienced falls or, in, or situations of imbalance that were a little bit scary, it's very common to develop a fear of falling. In response to that fear, our body tends to hold back or pull back, which actually makes our balance worse. It makes it harder for us to move naturally and it makes it harder for us to recover balance when we do find ourselves off kilter. So as we go through these physical exercises, we're also working through mental and emotional components to help improve our comfort in movement and our confidence in our balance. All of these things working together will help you get your life back, will help you be able to do the things that you love to do every single day to the best of your ability. Because our balance involves our eyes, ears, and the portion of our body that's in contact with the surface, it's important to note if you've had any recent changes in these areas. Visual changes, including blurry vision or double vision, or any change in your vision recently will make a difference in your balance. Changes in your hearing or pressure or pain in your ears are also something to consider. Finally, any numbness, tingling, pain, or weakness in your ankles and, and your feet will also impact your balance. Also, if you take medications, check the labels for side effects. It's amazing how many medications list dizziness as a side effect. And of course, that could also impact your balance. So if you've had any changes in these areas, be sure to talk about those with your primary care provider. Okay, to prepare for these exercises, be sure that you have enough space to move around. About 10 feet is enough. Also, uh, start these exercises standing next to a countertop or some other sturdy support. As you gain confidence and as your balance improves, you'll be able to move away from that countertop. But it's really important and very helpful to initiate these exercises without additional support. And finally, breathing is a powerful tool to calm your nervous system, maintain good blood flow, and help improve your comfort with all of these exercises. So I recommend inhaling before you start the exercise and then exhale as you initiate the movement. All right, the first exercise is a head turn. Start with tall posture, your feet about hips distance apart, chest lifted, shoulders relaxed down and back, and a little bit of a chin tuck. Rest your hands on the countertop, especially the first time you do this exercise. Inhale to prepare. As you exhale, turn your head to the left as far as you feel comfortable going. Pause, and then turn your head back to the center. Repeat on the right. Exhale, turn your head. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, turn to the left. Inhale, come back to the center. Continue alternating left and right sides. Turn your head just as far as you feel comfortable going. This is also a good neck rotation exercise, but that's not the primary intention for doing it at this time. 
So just turn it as far as you feel comfortable and come back to the center. Start at a slow, smooth pace. Start with 10 repetitions and build up to 20 repetitions as you go along. As your confidence improves, as your balance gets better, gradually start to lift your fingertips off the countertop. I'll show you what that might look like. So if I'm resting my fingertips here on the countertop, as I turn to the side, I'm just going to gently tap. Just lift up on the countertop while I turn side to side. Eventually, once you feel confident, then go ahead and just keep your hands elevated above the countertop. Turn left and turn right. Continue side to side. Now, once you feel confident that you can do this without any countertop support, then simply have your arms relaxed by your side and continue the head turns. The next exercise is standing with your feet as close together as you can get them. Still maintain tall posture, chest lifted, shoulder blades relaxed down and back, a little bit of a chin tuck. Now with this one, also pull in your abdominals and tilt your pelvis slightly down and under. It's very helpful to engage your core muscles to help with balance. That's helpful for all of these exercises, but this one is a great time to practice it because we're otherwise just standing still. So it's a little easier to identify, engage those lower abdominal muscles and maintain that core contraction as we're standing here. The goal is to stand with your feet together for 30 seconds. The first time you practice this, start with your hands on a countertop for support. Just as with the first exercise, as you start to feel comfortable, start tapping, lifting the fingertips up, and then hold them up for a longer period of time. And then finally, when you're ready, stand with your hands comfortably by your side. Now step your feet apart, relax your feet for a moment, bring them back together again. Perform the feet together exercise three repetitions, holding as long as you can, the goal being 30 seconds. The next exercise is single leg balance. Definitely stand next to a countertop with your hands supported the first time you practice this. Start with tall posture, chest lifted, shoulder blades relaxed down and back with your fingertips on the countertop for support. Shift your weight over to one leg and lift the other leg up just barely off the surface so that your toes can still touch down if you need the additional support. Find a focal point straight ahead and hold for as long as you can. The goal is 30 seconds. As you get more and more comfortable, start to lift your fingers off the surface until you're able to just hold your hands above the surface and then finally have your hands by your side. All right, and then put your foot down, switch legs. Shift your weight to the other leg Engage your abdominals, engage your, your gluteal muscles in your buttocks to help hold your core firm. And find a focal point straight forward. And again, tap on the surface as you're able to in order to begin lifting your hands off the surface and elongating the amount of time that you're standing on one foot. Hold as long as you can, the goal is 30 seconds. Continue alternating sides three times on each leg. The next exercise is a side lunge. Now, if you have knee issues, you can still do this exercise just with a simple step instead of an actual lunge. So only go down into the lunge as far as you feel comfortable. Pay attention to how your body's feeling. There's no need to overdo it with this. The purpose of this is to improve your balance, not sink into a deep lunge. As with the other exercises, it can be very helpful to take a nice deep breath in before you start and then exhale as you initiate the movement. Standing in front of the countertop with tall posture, your feet about hips distance apart, hands resting on the countertop. We'll step out to the side, run your hands along the countertop, bend the knee a little bit, as much as you feel comfortable. Pause and bring that leg back to the center. Now lunge to the left and bend that knee a little bit as much as you feel comfortable. Come up to the starting position again. Continue alternating right and left sides. Perform 10 repetitions on each side, so a total of 20 lunges. As you feel comfortable, lift your fingertips up so you're still running them along the top of the countertop, but without touching and continue left and right sides. You might go ahead and lower one hand and just use the other hand for balance now and then as you need it. 
And then as you gain more confidence, try doing it with your arms just at your side. Okay, the next three exercises are walking exercises. With all of the walking exercises, I recommend starting with about 100 feet total. So if you have a 10 foot runway, try to do 10 laps. If you need to estimate based on the space you have in your house, that's just fine. The first one is head turns and head nods. Run your hand along the countertop at least the first few times you do this. As you build confidence, you'll be able to move your hand away from the countertop. So as I step forward, I'm going to turn my head left and right. Now as I head back the other direction, I'm going to do the head nod. Small movement. Look up just about to where the wall meets the ceiling and look down to where the wall meets the floor. So I'll look up and down and up and down. Now I don't have a very long runway here in the studio, so depending on how much space you have, continue the head nods and the head turns, as many repetitions as your space allows. So I'll show that again. So as I walk, I'm going to turn my head left and right. And then as I go back the other way, I'll look up and down, up and down. Now in terms of the sequencing and the pacing here, I recommend starting by making the turn with each step because it's just easier to coordinate that. As you feel comfortable, as your confidence improves, try adjusting that pace. You could try moving your head a little bit faster or walking a little bit faster. See what works best for you. The point is to challenge your system in a way that helps you to build physical strength, improve your balance, and feel more comfortable and confident in your mobility. The next one is side stepping. Start with your feet about hips distance apart and simply step to the side. Continue looking at a point on the wall across the room from you. If it helps you to maintain that focal point, go ahead and start there. As you feel more and more comfortable, try shifting your focus, looking around a little bit. That adds another level of difficulty, another level of challenge to this exercise. All right, continue 10 lengths side to side. The last exercise is a 180 degree turn. The purpose of this last one is to focus on the speed of the turn. Start by standing next to a countertop for support and walk at a comfortable pace to the end of your runway. When you reach the end, turn as quickly as you can and then continue walking, running your hand along the countertop, and when you reach the end, turn as quickly as you can. Continue going back and forth, focusing on the speed of the turn. Use the countertop as much as you need to, but gradually, as you build up confidence and comfort, try to take your hand off of the countertop as you make the turn. Okay, throughout these exercises, I included some cues as to how to progress them to make them more challenging. In a nutshell, you can progress all the exercises by gradually decreasing how much support you have on the countertop. Another progression is to increase the repetitions of the exercise. You can also increase the speed of movement, either head movement or body movement or the actual speed of walking. So play with these, experiment, explore, try different things each time you do it when you're ready for a little bit more challenge. See what feels best for you. Continue to tune into your body to see what works, what feels good, what helps you to build confidence, comfort, and help you get back to doing your everyday activities to the best of your ability. Keep in mind also that as exercises get easier, they are great for building confidence. It helps to send that message with reassuring affirmations of my balance is getting better, I'm standing stronger, I'm able to walk better. That can be very helpful. With more challenging exercises, it's great to acknowledge these are more challenging. I'm continuing to work to improve my balance. That's a great way to focus on progress rather than focus on areas of ongoing limitation or difficulty. Now I've also posted other videos with intermediate and advanced level balance exercises. When you have completed all of the exercises in this video with the repetitions that I recommended at a medium speed and you feel comfortable and you're ready for further challenge, then go ahead and move on to the intermediate level video.
I hope you enjoy these exercises and they help you to do the things you love to do every single day. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm able. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Here's to your healing, health, and happiness. Have a fantastic day.